Nintendo is at it again, thumbing their nose at decades of legal precedent and attacking not only video game preservation, but also the freedom of speech and the right to repair movement too. The question is though, does Nintendo have a legal right to issue DMCA attacks against the Dolphin emulator? Let's dig into the specifics here. First, this all started about a year ago when Dolphin announced that their software was going to be released on Steam for free. And I was pretty excited about this announcement, honestly. This would have meant that players would have been able to download the GameCube and Wii emulator directly through Steam, dramatically increasing the reach of the software. But 12 months on from that initial announcement, and Nintendo sends Valve, the owner of Steam, a Digital Millennium Copyright Act or DMCA notice that basically imposed an injunction against the distribution of Dolphin on Steam. Valve was notified that, quote, because the Dolphin emulator violates Nintendo's intellectual property rights, including but not limited to its rights under the DMCA's anti-circumvention and anti-trafficking provisions, we provide this notice to you of your obligation to remove the offering of the Dolphin emulator from the Steam store. So what intellectual property is Dolphin actually violating? And you know, it might be tempting to believe that Nintendo has yet another novel and expansive interpretation of the term intellectual property rights, but the blame actually in this case does not land at Nintendo's feet, surprisingly enough. The fact is that the DMCA is an overly broad, highly controversial, and in my opinion, illegal law that effectively creates anti-speech monopolies for digital systems, and it grants platform holders extra legal authority over their platform. And Nintendo's DMCA attack against the Dolphin emulator is just another example of why the DMCA should be struck down. See, while Dolphin does not distribute ISOs of Nintendo's games, nor images of the GameCube or Wii system software, Nintendo does have a legally valid claim against Dolphin under the DMCA. And do note that a legally valid claim does not mean a morally justified claim. Contained within Dolphin's source code is an encryption key. Under the current intellectual property regime in the United States, of which the DMCA is a part of, encryption keys are the intellectual property of the party that issued them. And when we say encryption key, it might conjure this idea of a physical key that unlocks a safe or something. But all that we're talking about here, really, when we say encryption key, is a prime number. And as absurd as it would be to think that Nintendo could have a valid intellectual property claim over the number three, for example, it is equally absurd to believe that Nintendo has a legal claim over any other. Now this isn't the first instance of what's called an illegal number. In fact, there's a whole Wikipedia article about this concept. Here's my artistic representation of Nintendo's illegal number rendered as a flag. Each color band here can be translated from its hexadecimal color value to a decimal representation. Once assembled from left to right, top to bottom, with the final hex code appended on the end, you have Nintendo's illegal number. And according to our corrupt and awful intellectual property regime, Nintendo owns that number. That's like Coca-Cola owning the color red or the Marvin Gaye estate owning the musical feel of R&B. But guess what? That's just the first part of the DMCA's bullshittery. The other component of Nintendo's valid legal claim against the DMCA is not just that Dolphin is illegally redistributing that number. No, it's also that Nintendo's illegal number is also being used to circumvent, quote, technological protection measures. What do I mean? Well, since Nintendo encrypted their commercial Wii games, it's technically illegal under the DMCA for anyone to decrypt those games in any way that Nintendo deems as unauthorized. See, it doesn't really matter that the community has derived the encryption key, and it doesn't matter that it's the legitimate encryption key, nor does it matter that they're using the exact decryption algorithm that the Wii uses to decrypt that software. It doesn't matter, right? Do you see the issue here? The problem is that the DMCA effectively grants Nintendo the legal authority to criminalize decrypting their games. That's wild. The DMCA basically privatizes the criminalization process, and that's absolutely insane to me. Yet it's what the DMCA essentially does. It's not just limited to Nintendo, though. I mean, John Deere does the exact same thing. When a farmer buys a John Deere tractor, they don't own that tractor, and John Deere has been given the legal authority by the DMCA to declare that when any of their tractors break down, any attempt the owner might make to repair the machine, 
well, that attempt is actually criminal behavior. And all John Deere needed to do was put a computer on board the tractor, and then suddenly, repairing the machine constitutes circumventing technical protection measures, and the farmer's effort to repair the machine that they own is technically illegal. And that's just one example. I mean, HP prevents you from using third-party ink and toner cartridges using the DMCA. And what's more, the DMCA acts as a chilling force on critical security research, and in doing so, I believe it actually violates the First Amendment's freedom of speech guarantee. And that right there makes the DMCA not only an immoral law, but also an illegal law. And while there are many things that people can do to affect change, given the insane corporate influence and lobbying over the intellectual property regime here in my home country, most of them are moot. That's why I've chosen the path of what I believe is our last resort, engaging in civil disobedience. We should be doing everything that we can to oppose the DMCA and the intellectual property law that it supports. Corporations shouldn't have any authority to unilaterally prescribe criminal behavior, yet that's essentially what the DMCA gives them the power to do. For example, theoretically, Facebook or any other big tech company could describe a piece of JavaScript code as a technical protection measure, and then should an end user run an ad blocker that prevents that piece of code from running? suddenly running an ad blocker becomes illegal. And since Facebook would put this hypothetical protection measure in their pixel tracking analytics code, and that code is included on a wide array of websites, suddenly everyone who uses an ad blocker, no matter if they are directly visiting facebook.com or not, is now a criminal under the DMCA. So it bears repeating, I believe the DMCA to be an unjust and unconstitutional law that emboldens corporate overreach and does very little, if anything at all, to protect the citizens of my country. That's why I believe it's our moral responsibility as engaged and conscientious citizens to play more emulated games. And while that might sound silly, I think that it's the height of responsibility for anyone who cares about just, ethical, or good governance. And just so you're aware, civil disobedience is defined as any active, peaceful, professed refusal to obey an illegal or unjust law. And look, this is not me saying that all laws are bad, I think laws are very important, but in this instance, the DMCA must be opposed. <laughs> and look, it's unarguable that playing games in Dolphin is peaceful. Nobody is getting hurt, either physically or financially. Yet Nintendo is trying to say that it's criminal behavior. So if you state that you're protesting the illegal nature of privately prescribed criminality, then you, my friend, are, as far as I'm concerned, engaged in civil disobedience. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so don't take what I'm saying here as legal advice, but what I am saying is that I believe that Nintendo's use of the DMCA, while fully in line with the spirit of that copyright act, in and of itself, is complicit in the DMCA's illegality. So when I show you this footage of me playing my legitimately obtained dump of Super Mario Galaxy, or Tears of the Kingdom for that matter, and include it here in this video essay as a creative expression and fair use remix of these copyrighted works, know that it is also in protest of what I believe to be an unjust and unconstitutional law through which Nintendo derives their claim of authority. But I also do this as a protest against what I believe to be an illegal statute that is in direct uh, opposition to freedom of speech, a threat to creative liberty, and a corrupting force against good governance. And I also do this in search of solidarity to find others willing to engage in similar creative expression with the hope of raising awareness and bringing about a better tomorrow when the DMCA has been repealed in its entirety.